I'm Dr. Pooja Arora. I'm from Sign Hospital. I'm a physiotherapist. Uh, so I totally agree with you. Just a small question. When uh, Muhammad Prophet attained his prophethood, uh, and he, as you said, he was a common man before he attained prophethood, by that time, is it that uh, Quran, which is the word of God, has enlightened only Muslims because God can't be partial? So what was the rest of the world doing when Muhammad Prophet was enlightening a small sect of people? And is it that such a long time is being taken for the rest of the sector of society to just get enlightened to this word of God? And how many years would the non-Muslims, like Hindus, would... Uh, I totally agree with you, it has to be a concept. Hindus are believing idols, pictures, but or Ram, Bhagwan, whatever, but it is a concept and they have to be enlightened about it, that it is one. Hinduism also follows uh, an almighty, which is a power, a divine power, but unfortunately it has been given in various forms. So this enlightenment, if Quran helps a Hindu to know this enlightenment, it is fabulous. Sister asked a very good question and a very important question. She said that if Quran is such a great book, if it's the word of Almighty God, then why, when it came to Prophet Muhammad, it was only meant for that small group, you know, Arabs of that time, only Muslim, why not for the full world, how long will it take? Sister, the Quran was never revealed only for the Muslims or for the Arabs. The Quran was revealed for the whole of humanity. It's mentioned in Surah Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse number 1, in Surah Ibrahim, chapter number 14, verse number 52, in Surah Baqarah, Baqara chapter number 2, verse number 185, and Surah Zumur chapter number 39, verse number 41, that the Quran was sent for the whole of humanity. Time is short, therefore I'm only giving references, not the quotations. So Quran was not sent only for the Muslims and the Arabs, the Quran was sent for the whole of humanity. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was not sent only for the Muslims and the Arabs. The Quran says in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 107, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةِ الْعَالَمِينَ That we have sent thee not, but as a mercy to all the human beings, as a mercy to all the world, as a mercy to all the creatures. The message is repeated in Surah Sabah, chapter number 34, verse number 28, that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is sent as a universal messenger, giving glad tidings and warning them against sins. But most of the human beings yet do not know. Now this verse of the Quran says, most of the human beings yet do not know. That's the reason, sister, we are having such conferences. It's the duty of every Muslim that should convey the word of Almighty God to all the human beings. So, uh, one more thing, sir. Can it I may ask? take time, but better late than never, sister. Better late than never. And everyone who claims to be a Muslim may not be a practicing Muslim. He may have a name, Abdullah, Zakir, Muhammad, Sultan, but he may not be a practicing Muslim. Similarly, as you rightly said, in Hinduism, you don't follow your scriptures. But yet, the religion which is the maximum followed, not only by lip service, but in practice today, it is Islam, number one. In numbers, Christianity, it is close to 2 billion. Muslims claiming is 1.3 billion. But the people practicing the religion, number one is Islam. Percentage-wise, it is the largest. So these lectures are mainly those small percentage of Muslims who are not following Islam correctly to get them closer to Islam. And to those non-Muslims, we want to give the message of peace, the message of love, and prove to the world that there is only one God. The ultimate peace can only come if you submit a will to Almighty God. That is the only way to get ultimate peace in this world and thereafter. So that is the reason, sister, we are having such conferences. We have a satellite channel, Peace TV, where every day more than 60 million people, they are watching it. So at least on the day of judgment, we can give shahada to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Rab, we did our best, whatever we could. We at least gave the message every day at least to 60 million people. And today, the message has even reached you, sister. So tomorrow, on the day of judgment, I can tell to Almighty God, I gave the message to the sister. Whether you accept or not is in your hand, sister. I just want to add, can I? Thank you very much, sir. Uh, just one more thing. If, because God is impartial, 
So on the day of judgment, as you did a partiality that uh, non-Muslims should be given first priority to ask their questions, God is impartial. So if Hindus stop believing in idols and pictures and they start believing in the Almighty, which has got no form, no shape, and on the day of judgment, is it that they will be not behaved as Muslims by God? No, it is not like that. It is the concept which is there in Hinduism, the misbelief that is followed in forms. But if, and Hindu, following Hindu religion is not wrong, but following, because your aim is God. He is the supreme. He should not have form. Very good but question. if this message is reached to Hinduism, you have won it. Very good, sister. Very good question. Thank you, sir. Regarding we being partial and impartial, there can be two different views from your side. <laughs> because we're partial, at least you could ask a question. <laughs> if I wasn't partial, I couldn't tell to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I gave you the message directly, one to one. You know? So He doesn't, he doesn't believe. So what we have to realize, sister, but why we are partial? We are partial to be impartial. Because the others have got the message. If not 100%, 90%. You all have got less. So we are partial to be impartial. Right, sir. So what we need now, to... coming back to your question, sister. <laughs> yes, it's sir. It's a very good question. That if the Hindus believe in one God, do not believe in idol, do not believe in images, do not believe in statues, on the day of judgment, won't we be Muslims? Correct. You are following part of Islam. Correct. If you read the Hindu scriptures further, the Hindu scriptures say there is another messenger to come. And the coming of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has been prophesied in various places. He's prophesied in Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adhya 3, Shloka 5 to 8. He's prophesied in Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adhya 3, Shloka 10 to 27. He's prophesied in the Atharva Ved, chapter number 21, verse number 6. Atharva Ved, chapter number 21, verse number 7. He is prophesied in several places. He is mentioned by name no less than 100 times as Muhammad in the Hindu scriptures. Right, Time sir. doesn't permit me to mention all the references. There is mention of a Kalki Autar in Kalki Purana, chapter number 2, verse number 4, 5, 7, 9, 11, and 15. It says that there is another Autar to come, Kalki Autar, whose father's name shall be the servant of God, Vishnu Yash, translated into Arabic as Abdullah, which was the name of the father of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The mother's name of this Kalki Autar would be Sumati, that means peace and serenity, which is Amina in Arabic, which was the name of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, mother. This person would be born on the 12th day of Madhav, the 12th Rabbi Awal, that is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam born. He'll have four companions, and we know the first for Khulfa Rashidin. It says that he will be born in a place which is peaceful, in Makkah. He'll be born in a house of the chief of Makkah, that is the Quraysh tribe. It says that he will go northwards from a cave and come back. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went from Makkah to Medina and came back. On and on, talking about Kalki Autar. So you believe in one part, La ilaha illallah, you also Muhammad have to believe in Muhammad Rasulullah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And if you do this, you keep your name. Whatever your name was, whether Preeti, whatever your name, sister. What is the name, sister? Pooja. Pooja. You keep your name. Don't change your name. But indeed, you will be a Muslim. Changing your name is not required. Sir, the concept... With concept of one God... No statue, no images. Last final messenger, Prophet Muhammad. Inshallah, on the day of judgment, you will go to heaven with your name, Puja. So the pathways are different. The only thing is the goal should be the same. That is no, what sister. I believe. For the goal, pathways are different. If both the different pathways go to meet, the same goal, it is fine. They meet at the same goal. Yes, sir. That is what I want to say. All the roads don't lead to Rome, sister. Fine? You may think it will lead. So if you think falsely, I have to correct you. I don't can, believe. No, sir. Uh, no, no sir. sister. If you say you're a Hindu, by yeah. definition, yeah. Hindu is a person who lives in India. No, sir. It's not like that. Sister, <laughs> Hindu is a geographical definition. You don't know. I know. I'm a Hindu by geographical definition. I'm a Hindu. Geographically, sister, the word Hindu was first used by the Arabs. There are many Arabs here. They call me Hindi when I go there. Hey, Hindi, hey, Hindi. <laughs> they tell I'm a Hindu. The word Hindu was first used by the Arabs when they came to India. It was also used by the Persians to describe the people who lived in India. So geographically, I'm a Hindu. But if you tell me religiously, Hindu is a misnomer. Swami Vivekananda said, the right term is a Vedantist. You should follow the Vedas. 
So as far as you follow the right things in the way that believe in one God and believing in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, by deed you are a Muslim. So the religion can't be powerful. The it ultimate is. power is Allah. Correct. Right? I ultimate agree with you. power is God. And the so religion of God and the religion of God is ultimate religion. So the There's religion of God religion. is not Islam. Mm. The religion of God is not Islam. Islam, isn't it? if Islam is Arabic word which is hurting you, you keep Islam aside. No, no, no. I, it's not hurting me. I'm telling it's you, sister. It's not hurting me. If it's not hurting you, nobody. No, sir. It is a park word in itself. How it can hurt anybody? It's At least not an educated girl. Mashallah, you're an educated girl, sister. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, sister, sir. Sister, Islam means submitting your will to God. So if Islam is a problem, keep Islam aside, but submit your will to God. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse number 19, in the Dina in the Lair Islam, the only religion, the only way of life accepted in the sight of Allah is submitting.